Hello and welcome to the Pole Position podcast on Let's Talk Sports YouTube channel. And what a race we had, didn't we, in China? Three races in and all of a sudden it's become one of those seasons that you just feel as though it's going to be more exciting than the last five years put together. I'm Jamie Davis. Alongside me is Jack Price, as always. He is, of course, an F1 blogger, and I'm sure he'll be blogging crazy <laughs> after that race. And it was Daniel Ricciardo winning it in style, started in six, gone on to win the race. And this is how you win it, by overtaking the likes of Lewis Hamilton, Sebastian Vettel, Raikkonen, every driver you can think of in the front row, even Bottas as well. Incredible race, Jack. In my eyes, Ricardo is just like Liverpool Football Club. You don't know what to expect of them on the day when they perform, and he wins races outside the top three, and he just wins it in spectacular style as always. Six wins now, I think, for him. Yeah, crazy. I mean, 30 laps, 30, 40 laps in, you know, he was still in sixth place. You know, you wouldn't have thought he'd, he'd end up to win the race. Uh, no. Incredible job. You know, people say he's the best overtaker in, on the grid. You know, I think he once again proved that in that race uh, this weekend. You know, phenomenal overtakes, you know, the, the way he can late break against Vettel and, and the overtake he did against Bottas. I mean, Bottas thought he got the job done and then here he comes up the inside. Crazy. Uh, and obviously for Red Bull, we, we, we'd have thought they would never have won on Sunday. That was the last headline I was expecting after what happened in qualifying because Daniel Ricciardo had so many hurdles to jump over. Um, but it doesn't matter. He jumped over every hurdle in front of him and that got him to the finish line first. Yeah, I mean, a phenomenal job. You know, he praised his mechanics after the race because what they did between practice three and actually qualifying, you know, to change the whole entire engine almost. Uh, and, and you could see, you know, three minutes to go in, in the first uh, qualifying session. He's drifting out of the garage because he wants to get, you know, done and wants to get out of the first uh, Q1. So, yeah, you know, a massive job from the whole team, really. You know, the, the strategy guys as well. The fact that they double stopped both times for both drivers, you know, is a phenomenal job by the team. So I think everybody uh, at Red Bull should be really proud of, of what they've done this weekend. I mean, Max Verstappen might have, have another point of view, but um, <laughs> yeah, you know, cr uh, amazing job by the them and you know they they do look like a an outside shot now uh we will listen to the moment daniel ricardo won the race and the team radio just shows how emotional it was for red bull to get that first win before mercedes <laughs> yes boys nice job, mate. clinical moves cutthroat scary nice job Absolutely brilliant, mate. Well done, Daniel. That was at Genty for doing all that hard work. He's going to go up and represent the boys in the garage today. So he'll, he'll be joining you up on the podium. So congratulations. Well done. <laughs> oh, I'm speechless. What a turnaround. Happy to see you all. I think you might have a bit of a thick head as well tomorrow. I love that at the end. I think you're going to have a thick head tomorrow. <laughs> I love it. I mean, you know, what I like about that race as well is that it wasn't just a victory for Ricardo; It was for the, the team as well. Because obviously, you know, they're there hours on end. Uh, the drivers just turn up to drive the car. And then the mechanics are there overnight. And, you know, they, they can't do anything after qualifying, I believe, in terms of changing the car. But it, it's, in, it's crazy. You know, they've got such a pressurizing job okay they get to go around the world but they probably make normal wages like everybody else but they've got to put in the hard work so it wasn't just a win for Ricard it was a win for those mechanics with all that hard work yeah of course you know like I mentioned earlier it's a massive job you know and everybody in that team should be really proud you know looking how well they worked the pit stops I mean both times especially the safety car one you know that the, it wasn't really expected obviously you don't always expect a safety car but it's there just in case and then when it came out the fact that they you know um, double stacked both times for Verstappen and, and Ricardo. And you know, they did a fantastic job in that. Uh, the only downside I can think for Red Bull, and especially for Ricardo, you won't think about it now, but the fact that between practice three and qualifying, he had to change his second engine. Yes. I think it's his second engine. Yeah. And of course, we know they only allowed three. So uh, you know, three races, races plenty. in, and you know he's used two already. <laughs> hey, at least they haven't gone over three. Well, well, that'll be next race, won't it? <laughs> no, 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 this engine will last till the end of the season now. Yeah, can you imagine that? <laughs> can you imagine having like your third engine and then it's come Abu Dhabi? We're going to have to have a fourth engine. It's like, really? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> really? No, we'll just we'll carry on. We'll carry on. Just we'll buff it out. Buff it out. Hey, hey McClan, have you got any spares? <laughs> got any no, McCla- tape. <laughs> Can you imagine going up to McClan last season? You got any spares? <laughs> We're trying to find spares. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but let, let's move on because there was a vital moment yesterday. Max Verstappen was like a kid. No, he was. He was like a kid behind a wheel yesterday. He went absolutely crazy on that track, as he always does. He is a proper racer, but uh, sadly, sometimes you have to take consequences. Um, and he went right into Vettel on the famous turn 14 because that, that that turn 14 had everything yesterday. All the overtakes took place there. They were the game changer, that bit of the track. Um, but obviously, he went in too late. Vettel was in his way. And it really was, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> so get out of the way. And then he went into Vettel. And then Hamilton and everybody else took over and ended up with Vettel eighth as well. Um, a big dent to his championship uh, season. Okay, it's early days. But let's hear what he had to say, Sebastian Vettel, um, after the incident. Surprise, Max attacked from that far back, despite his tire advantage. Well, I didn't see him until very late. So uh, I left a little bit of room as well. I mean... To be honest, I was expecting him to come earlier. I didn't. I had no intention to resist because it was clear with Daniel as well that there was no point doing so. Uh, they were just too fast on the fresh tyres, so uh, I didn't want to compromise the, my race to the guys behind. But then, obviously, he did a mistake. He locked up, which happens. You know, we have tailwind down that straight the whole race, and yeah, I guess he misjudged and obviously uh, sort of uh, compromised both of our results. So you had a little chat here behind the pen. Uh, you've had your run-ins before, but do you understand that he, you know, he's a, he's a young driver, but does he need to calm down? Not anymore, he did enough races, so, uh, you know, but again, this can happen to you also when you've done 300 races, so uh, inside the car, you know, and mustn't forget that the judgments are very difficult to make, but you have to ultimately have these things in mind and, uh, yeah, make sure you don't... Uh, crash i mean he could have easily taken his front wing off get a puncture whatever you know so uh, then it's game over for both of us in that case i obviously we're both lucky but uh, yeah that's it, how it goes and let's hear what max verstappen had to say after the accident with vettel yeah so uh, i could see them struggling on the tires and tried to break you know, late into the corner and um locked the rears a bit and uh, yeah hit him so that was of course my fault um, it's not what you want, and of course it's easy to say afterwards. Yeah, I should have waited. Um, probably would have, you know, would have been the best idea. But uh, yeah, unfortunately it happened. And we saw you had a brief chat with Seb after the, you came out Park, park Fermi. Uh, all fairly amicable. Yeah, I mean, of course, I, you know, I uh, think we have all been in that position in that situation. So I think as drivers, you know, we we can talk about this stuff. Uh, and a few, you know, probably a few people have said that perhaps you need to calm down your driving. Is that the way you see, it or do you see, to see it as uh, a certain number of incidents, and you know, you, you just keep going the way you're going? It's easy to comment that. Just at the moment, it's not going the way I like, of course. But does it really mean I have to calm down? I, I, I don't think so. It's, it's just very uh, unfortunate those things happening. I just need to analyze everything and uh, try to to come back stronger for the for the next race. Max Verstappen, I, I, you know, he's so young, but he's so responsible, isn't he? You know, there he was being mature, took the responsibility, even put out a tweet, you know, saying it was all my fault today. I mean, you, you can't escape it, I guess, when the TV cameras from all over the world are, are spectating that moment. But you, I, I can't be doing with what we're seeing on Twitter. I, OK, I know we, in, we live in a world now where criticism can be seen from every single person mm. on this planet, which isn't a great thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously... Uh, many were saying Verstappen should be demoted, um, kind of like Daniel Kvyat did for Verstappen to be at Red Bull. But, you know, this guy is the future of F1. We've just said it in between the interviews, he is the making of a world champion. And, you know, that whole saying of Art and Senna, if you don't go for the gap anymore, then you're not a racing driver. Yeah, and I agree. You know, I, I think there's a lot of people out there that as soon as something goes wrong for somebody, they pounce. It's like, yeah. oh, you know, that he's he's rubbish or, you know, he doesn't deserve to be in that spot. Max Verstappen is a is a quality driver. You know, we've seen that. People have been heralding him for, for years. You know, his first race in Red Bull, we watched it here in the studio oh, live yeah, yeah. You know, at the Spanish Grand Prix where he won his first you know, race for Red Bull. And even then you could tell, you know, he had that something special and, you know, he still has that. You know, yes, he's had a poor start to this season, you know, a couple of crashes, uh, you know, a couple of issues that qualifying of in Bahrain last uh, weekend. Yeah, yeah. But he's still learning. You know, he's still very young. And, uh, you know, if people think he's young, 
putting Pierre Gasly in the seat. Pierre Gasly's even younger. Yeah. So he's obviously yeah. going to have the, still the same issues that Verstappen and, is. And Pierre Gasly's only had one race that people have recognized him. You can't do it in one race. No, and you know, the, I don't know whether it was Honda or what yesterday, but you know, they had an issue altogether. They were nowhere yesterday, uh, Toro Rosso. So, yeah, the, Max Verstappen is a quality driver, and he's, he's going to show that. And I think the people that are out there just trying to, to put him down... You know, the, it's it's not fair. Uh, Sebastian Vettel and Verstappen, we saw, you know, have a conversation while mm. they were in the pen, and you know, Sebastian Vettel, to be to be fair, was was very honest and you know, uh, respect respectful, really, because he knows he's he's made mistakes like Verstappen is doing now, you know, and he's probably just trying to give him a bit of advice. Yes, he's disappointed, and like you said, if it was later on in the season, Vettel might not have been so kind. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, he, he's there just giving him advice. You know, he was at Red Bull when he was young, and you know, he's just trying to pass it on. So, you know, credit to Vettel for not really kicking off and for Stappen for obviously apologizing. You know, he knows it was his fault. He could have got a podium. He probably could have even got the win, you know, if he was ahead of Ricardo before that issue. So he might have actually won the race. So he knows that he's made the error. And, and like you said, one more lap and he might have done it without mm. having to crash. But, you know, th there was a gap there. It closed very quickly. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, you know, it's one of those, isn't it? It's all going to plan and then... Uh. Well, yeah. You know, Vettel said he left him just enough room but, uh, uh, in case he made an error. Um, and, uh, you know, Ve uh, Verstappen thought there was enough for gap. But by the time he realized there wasn't, you know, it was too late. <laughs> He's just going to collide. And um, <laughs> But, yeah, like you said, if... if People, uh, if drivers don't go for the for the gaps in F one, they're pointless. It's pointless exactly. them racing. So that's yeah. how they get there. Exactly. It's funny because um, obviously Vettel said in the interview as well. Someone asked him, you know, is that due to his experience? And it's just like he's done enough races now to notice this. And he also said people do it after three hundred races. Mm. You know, it's it's it's, it's it's bad judgment, isn't it? You know, if, not all pros can do it every day on the track or in any other sport, in any other job. So, well, we look at Jensen Button's last race at Monte Carlo <laughs> when he, who was it that he hit Pascal Verlaine yeah. on that corner? <laughs> I mean, it didn't matter. At least he hit a driver that, <laughs> at least he hit a driver that, let me try and get out of this. I think wasn't he was going to get any points anyway. Well, I think he was bored that he was driving around in that McLaren Honda, but yeah. <laughs> but you know, he, you know, how many races he was a world champion and he still made that error. So. And he probably peed on the seat for Alonso exactly. to kind of go, I've left my patch <laughs> for you like a dog would um, when they leave their territory. Jensen Button, you're better than that. <laughs> uh, I mean, we've met you. We know you're better than that. You look like James Bond when we met you. He did. Um, anyway, apologies. We'll go through the leaderboard. <laughs> Valtteri Bottas now. He's got mm. two uh, runners-up medals, you could say, uh, so far this season. So, you know, he's doing, he's performing better than Hamilton in a way. So it's been good for him. No one really talking about him, though. But, he's, you know, he is a potential championship contender. Yeah, he's sort of a bit under the radar, but he's he's consistent, you know. Like like you say, you know, second place in in two races, you know, two second places in three races, should I say? And you know, that, that's that's a good start, and and that's what Mercedes want. You know, they, they've got the one, the driver that can win world championships and win races quite comfortably in Lewis Hamilton. They just need that uh, second driver that is consistent in the points, and and Valtteri Bottas is, is doing that. And like you said, he's higher than Hamilton at the moment. Will it stay that up throughout the season? Probably not. No. But you know they they need him to do the job in the points, and he, he's doing that. And he you know he actually did quite well fighting the Ferraris yesterday. Uh, I mean, he tried to to fight off Daniel Ricciardo, but that move was just phenomenal. You know, the, yeah, he'd yeah. already made his his move, Bottas. He couldn't do another one, so he just had to to let Ricciardo go past. And it was funny on the radio because Ricciardo just, you know, he, he was like, "That was that was amazing." You know, he's bigging himself up, but it was, you know, it was a quality overtake, and Bottas couldn't do much more. But yeah, he's you know he, he's doing not too bad this season. You know, mm. two second places mm. is is good, and if he can keep that going. Next race is Azerbaijan, and he just got a second place from Lance Stroll last year. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, he'll be hoping he knows that track well, and he was good last year. So, hopefully, he'll uh, get up there as well. Confidence will certainly get stronger for him, I'm sure, yeah. with these finishes. Uh, Kimi Raikkonen third. So, obviously, we had two Finland drivers <laughs> uh, talking in a language we just don't understand, but mm -hmm. it's a word that we hear a lot mm -hmm. um, on the podium. Blah, 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 blah. It was a very interesting post match, uh, post uh, race press conference uh, where two only, Finns were just sitting there <laughs> there's only one character in the three of them that's what's really <laughs> weird what did he, what did Ricardo say Tuesday test 
What did he say? I don't know. He said something, something, but you just see the two guys. If you watch the video, you just see two uh, Finns just sitting there going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, I feel sorry for Raikkonen because he's always like, why am I always on the podium? Yeah. But I'm never on that top step. <laughs> I know. Raikkonen, I think Raikkonen sometimes thinks, if I'm not first, I'd rather be fourth just so I'm not here, sitting <laughs> yeah. here and talking. Yeah, I was going to say, because you only have to do the interviews out round back. Yeah, and he's gone in five minutes, isn't he? Yeah. So <laughs> I think Hamilton had literally left China by the time everyone left the circuit. <laughs> he had enough. Um, Lewis Hamilton fourth. Um, we will just hear from him now because Lewis Hamilton... Yet again, it's, it's missed out on the podium. Okay, got podium in Australia. It's not exactly the start they wanted. Hamilton actually did say in this interview now that, you know, the pace was not there. Let's hear what he had to say after perhaps a disappointing race for him in China. No, I mean, I was in no man's land today. I had no pace, so I was just um, trying to hold on for whatever I had. <laughs> and those Red Bulls, obviously, on the softer tyre, when they came past, no chance of keeping them behind. Yeah, obviously not. Um, yeah, I mean, I had the, had the older tyre on and was running out of it. Uh, and going going away from here, obviously you've, it, as it worked out, reduced your championship deficit. So uh, how do you see the picture at the front going towards Baku? Uh, I'm not quite sure, to be honest. I think we've got a, we, we've got a, obviously it's a, a tough battle ahead of us, um, particularly on my side, on, I would say my side, but also us as a team. We've been underperforming and um, since yesterday yesterday and today have been a disaster on my side so i've got to try and rectify that and get myself back into where normal uh performance mode so i can um otherwise more valuable points would be lost but the uh, thankful for a couple of incidents that had happened ahead today kept us kind of in the battle so right it's funny isn't it how uh, hamilton it was like he was invisible on sunday which is very rare we never see that and in a way, if Vettel and Hamilton are going to go for the championship against each other, then you'd think Vettel will look back and think, I could have I could have mm. got points out of it, really, because that car was not with it. What was it? What happened to Mercedes on Sunday? Uh, I don't know, because it, it's sort of two different uh, styles, because, you know, Valtteri Bottas got a second place, and he, his car looked, you know, decent. You know, he, he was fighting with the two um, Ferraris and, and, you know, the Daniel Ricciardo's Red Bull at some point as well. So, he, you know, he looked like he had decent pace. But Lewis Hamilton, whether he was struggling with tyres uh, and had issues with the... I think he was talking about left uh, rears and, and the rear tyres mm. themselves because we know, you know, the Shanghai circuit is, is quite difficult for rear tyres. So... Um, I think he was having issues with that, but the pace didn't look on it. And I thought Mercedes would dominate in Shanghai because it's a very high-powered circuit. It was their you know? first win by a mile. Yeah, I thought it was easily going to be for them. So you know, they looked like they really struggled, but uh, they made a, a good pit stop with Valtteri Bottas because he got ahead of of uh, the Ferrari of Sebastian Vettel, and that looked like a really good pit stop. The pit stop itself looked quick. Uh, when they showed it on the cameras. Um, but I think one mistake they did make was not bringing in Lewis Hamilton under the safety car. And they showed that they had serious enough time. He was just coming around that turn 14 when the safety car light flashed on the sideboards around the track. And uh, they had enough time to get him in and he would have been like the two Red Bulls then on fresh tyres and, and hopefully pushing. But um, you know, they said, was it Mercedes' error? But I also think of it with Lewis Hamilton thinking, can't I just go into the pits? You know, can't I just say to them, I'm coming in, safety car, I want new tyres. And the team just has to react to that, surely. Mm. Yeah, you know, I, I, They say that it's the team's fault, but surely he can go in as well. I mean, it'll be a bit rushed, like, but surely if Lewis thinks it's the best call, he should be able to say, look, I want to come in now. And if he comes in, he's got, they've got enough time as he goes in the pit lane to, to come out and get tyres, surely. Many, but, well, many reckon that when he missed the pit stop opportunity, that could have won in the race as well. Yeah. So it could have been a different game. Well, different result at the end of yesterday. Oh, yeah, because both Red Bulls pitted in that safety car. Yeah, um, and it was a good good strategy as well. Yeah, and it, you know, it worked completely for them. Uh, you could see that their tyres were a lot better than all the other ones that hadn't pitted easily. So, you know, I think that was the case. And I think Sebastian Vettel said as well, he just missed the bollard yeah. to say. And he said, otherwise, I would have gone in. So if, if he should have gone in, then, you know, surely Lewis should have thought about it as well. But... You know, he said before the, the weekend that both him and the team and everybody needed to bring their A game. And I struggled to see his C game, D game, E game. <laughs> I, you know, F. Yeah. But yeah, obviously he's a, he's a quality driver and I'm sure for the rest of the season he'll do well. But yeah, he had a bit of an off game. Well, all I can say is for Hamilton and Mercedes fans is it wasn't a great start last season. 
it could it could change in in Azerbaijan. Um, anyway, we'll go through the leaderboard. Uh, Max Verstappen fifth. Um, you know, I think he'll take that after getting a ten second penalty. And even though the guy that he is responsible for making him lose the race finished below him still. <laughs> I find that quite funny. Uh, Nico Hulkenberg, six. Again, Hulkenberg consistent there with Renault, which just shows, you know, Renault really are getting the points now where it matters. Yeah, I mean, uh, quality drive. You know, he looked on it in qualifying mm. uh, and in the practice as well. I think third practice, he was up there with Kevin Magnussen. Both drivers were looking uh, uh, really fast. So, yeah, another great drive for him. And, and like you said, showing that Renault have made some... Uh, you know, further pushes in the engine department. I mean, McLaren are looking decent with that Renault engine. Renault themselves are looking good. And of course, Red Bull win the race in it. So um, mm. let's let's hope that they do a little bit more improvements and, and get right up to the top. Uh, Fernando Alonso, seventh. And uh, we'll play his interview now. But if you actually watch it on YouTube, he looked positive, upbeat. And, you know, obviously this season's already better than his whole time at McLaren, except for 2007 when he nearly won it. Mm. But, uh, but no, he looks very happy with the car. Um, it's still early days, but the car are getting points. This is what the Spaniard had to say. Yeah, I was surprised, definitely. You know, when I saw Ferrari uh, going on not too fast uh, at the end, I, I asked what was the problem. Apparently, he had uh, damage on his car, so uh, he was struggling a little bit on the corners. Uh, we, we catch him and uh, we saw the, the door open in one corner. We went for it and, uh, yeah, uh, we, we make the pass. Obviously, still some, some pace to find. We were not quick enough again on the race, but uh, at the same time, a great result. I think P7 starting P13 is, is good points for the team again. Uh, was was pushing quite hard from behind, so it was a, a group race. Uh, and, yeah, we, we more or less uh, take benefit from all the, the battles. So, as I said, great result for Sunday, but uh, we cannot forget that the pace was not there all, all weekend, so we need to keep improving. Well done. Thank you. He really is a different person. So upbeat, as I just mentioned, but... Just even listening to him on the interview there, this is this is going to plan, I think, for McLaren. And it's not the results that they are probably aiming for, but you know, they're getting the points and they're 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 gonna go in contention for that fourth spot at least. Yeah, I mean I don't think that any of them in, in that team were thinking uh championship wins this season. You know, if they get one, fantastic, but I don't think they were aiming for that. Yeah, the, what they're aiming for is to just get points consistently. Mm. I mean, I'm sure we said that last week consistently. Is this something yeah, that we're yeah, bringing up? Oh my god. It used to be um, consistently engine problems, but it's consistently consistently talking about this. Um <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's what they want. They want as many points each race as possible and and Fernando Alonso like you said is he's looking a different driver. 3 years of hell with Honda, let's be mm. honest. And you know, three races in with with Renault, and they've scored points in in every race. And you know, they look at their fourth in the championship now because Red Bull overtook them. I didn't think they? they are, yes. So, but you know, fourth is is still where they're aiming for at the end of the season. So, if they can keep keep continuing, it's great to see a McLaren on there. And we have to talk about his move on Vettel. Oh, I mean, what an overtake! Because okay, <laughs> it was on the third cut. No, sorry. Third or second corner. Yeah, I it's, that loop, it's that loop. It's that loop, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. Um, but that was a great overtake, you know, against a Ferrari as well. Yeah. And he stayed ahead of Vettel throughout the race after that. So that, for me, was the master against showing a world champion how it's done. Yeah, I mean, Vettel did say we've had damage. So we don't know how bad the damage was, mm. but as soon as... Um, uh, Fernando Alonso in his McLaren saw that red Ferrari in front. I could just see him going, I'm having that. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, you, you know, Vettel wasn't very happy because it, it did look like Alonso just sort of nudged him off the track. But again, that's <laughs> that sort of racing. No action was was warranted against the move. And Fernando was just like, yeah, I'm back. And he was just <laughs> like, you know, pu pushing uh, Vettel off the track. And yeah, Vettel didn't really have a, a great day from Verstappen onwards, uh, incident onwards. And yeah, I think Fernando just sort of put the nail in the coffin for the day. He's just like, no, nah, I'll have you. He's still he's still the best drive on the grid. Yeah. I mean, we said during that um, interview, I'd love um, my two driver pair and would probably be somebody like Alonso and, and Ricardo. Mm. Yeah, they haven't got the championships of, of Hamilton and Vettel and obviously Max Verstappen is a quality driver as well. But I think them two... The, their overtakes, both of them are, are phenomenal and both of them are, are two quality drivers and I, I'd love to have them. If I had a team, they wouldn't be my two drivers. It's like they're being wasted, aren't they? Even though it's Ricardo's extent, at a yeah. good team. It is it is like a waste, really. But obviously, Ricardo still has a few years left in him. Alonso, hopefully, will go on and win every He'll race. He'll be there at 50. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> he could be there till he dies. He, he, can, he can die as a heart attack in a car, you know. We, We'll be happy for it. Well, no, we won't be happy. We'll be happy that he died doing what he loved. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I, I'll quite, I'll get, I'll carry on. Vettel eighth, and yes, as I said, for someone who had 
not got his way. He finished three places below Verstappen still. But as you said, Jack, the 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 damage was there. That that did not help. And obviously, funny enough, Vettel when he left the car, he looked at the Red Bull as well. I'd, I'd imagine he looked at that car to see if he did. Was there any damage in that car though? Was that why I was below it? But uh, you know, Vettel will look at it. We won't talk to it about him too much now. But surely with Vettel, will it'll just look at the weekend and think I've got to put it behind me. Azerbaijan's next. Try and get a win there. Yeah, I mean, like you said, for Hamilton, he, he could have extended his, his lead with, with Vettel being at eighth. But also on the other point, you know, Vettel could have had an even worse weekend if Hamilton had won the race. So, you know, he's got to be quite lucky, although he had that terrible uh, thing of going from first to <laughs> eighth. But, you know, Ham- if Hamilton had won the race, think of the point difference. You know, mm. Hamilton's only nine points behind now, but he could have been almost ahead. So. He could have been. Yeah, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, Carlos signs ninth, Kevin Magnussen. Attempt to get the final point from China. Um, Force India again are missing out on the points. And you do start to worry now. Three races in, it gets that point now where you start to maybe notice where these cars are going towards. Um, It's early days, but Arcon and Perez getting 11th and 12th there. No points. So that really doesn't mean anything. Williams, it's just a standard race for them now, isn't it? 14th and 15th for Lance Stroll and Sergei Sorokin. Uh, Saab with Marcus Ericsson is 16th. Grosjean, 17th. Gasly, wow, this is just disappointing, isn't mm. it, Gasly? You're supposed to be the replacement demoted. of Max Verstappen. <laughs> yeah, you're demoted to... Uh, National the, League. The, <laughs> yeah, to the Red Bull Cola team, if that <laughs> exists. Um, but yeah, Pierre Gasly getting 18th after he got 4th in Bahrain mm. over a week ago. Uh, Charles the Clerk did finish for Salba, and the only retirement was Toro Rosso's Brendan Hartley. And... Uh, yeah, it's it's probably quite standard what we've seen in the race results there. But, you know, yet again, that middle of the table, it's so unpredictable. Mm. But just going back to Force India, should they be worried? Uh, I don't know. I mean, they look good in qualifying. You know, they, they were in the top 10 in, in qualifying at the end. So they've still got decent pace, but they're just struggling over the, the, yeah. the race distances. And I'm not sure what it is, whether they're struggling with tyres or... I mean, the, the more worrying thing at, at the point was when they were both fighting for 11th and Perez and Ocon were right next to each other and they're thinking, oh no, these two Force Indians are close again. Are they gonna, <laughs> they're going to hit each other or what's going to go on? But yeah, I, I just think they're struggling just for that final bit of, uh, final bit of pace. Um, but like um, they've said last season, you know, they struggled in the first couple of races and then you know they sort of powered on for the rest of the season. So they, they've still got opportunity. Obviously, we keep saying it, it's a long season. So there's still a chance to, to, to fight back and there's not that many points in front, you know, when you look at Sauber and all them. So they're going to be okay. I think the one point I have got to discuss is obviously the Brendan Hartley retiring and obviously Pierre Gasly decided to hit each other. Yes. Um, mm. I'm not sure. Didn't work out for Hartley, did it? No. <laughs> well, I'm not sure why and for what reason. I think was it Pierre Gasly was thinking, I'm going to go for an overtake here. Yeah, a bit like yeah, Verstappen. Yeah. And he was just like, oh, but no. But it's one of those, wasn't it, where I forgot that happened because it didn't mean anything uh, no. compared to Verstappen and Vettel. No, no. You know, when they're at the back, it doesn't really mean no. much. But when you hit your teammate, there's there's going to there's gonna be some uh, consequences, I yeah. think. You never hit your teammate. No. And Hartley's got a lot to prove, really. Um, let's be honest, because Gasly got fourth. He's going to have to look and think, hang on, I've got the same car. Mm. Fourth isn't a definite, but got to give it a go to impress the management, of course. Yeah, I, I think that they're higher than Williams at the minute. So you do need they should, to... Well, that's not going to be hard, is it? Well, no, because Williams just looked terrible. But um, they need to be pushing. You know, the, the fact that he was at the back of the grid, was he, before he retired, Brendan Hartley? Yeah, Harley? yeah. I think, I'm not sure. But yeah, you need to be fighting ahead of them Williams and probably even the Sauber as well, because that's not exactly the, the fastest car around the track. No. So yeah, I think they need to look at that. But it was it was quite a poor race from Honda Power Unit. They struggled with that. And you look at what they did in Bahrain to, to that in Shanghai, you know, the, it was quite a big difference. Speaking of Williams, Guy Martin, the, uh, the celebrity, you know, he did pit stop challenge for them in a spa last year. Mm-hmm. Maybe they should get him in to help out because I feel like they need anyone they can get right now. I think they need bad. to get him in to drive. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Wait, well, he can fit in one, that's for sure. He's a skinny lad. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know what's going on. They just they just look all over the place. They don't mm. know that they've got a good downforce. Their pace doesn't look very good. And with a Mercedes power unit in it, you think that they would be somewhere, but they're really struggling. I think I think because since Susie Wolf left, Toto Wolf isn't giving them the special treatment well, anymore. Yeah, he's just like, nah, <laughs> I'll just give you a really basic engine, the one that we put in one of our horrible cars that we made. One 
one of the, one of those that we bought from the catalogue, but we never needed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't even know if it works. Yeah, don't even there know if go. it works. There you go. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need the money. We have made a lot from the last few years. Um, anyway, we did ask on our Let's Talk Sport Twitter account, which you can follow on our link below, which is at Let's Talk Sport Twelve. And we do this at every race, and we asked for your Chinese Grand Prix driver of the day. Of course, Twitter only gives us four options. So I would put more if I could, but I can't do it. I'm not the owner. Um, Daniel Ricciardo, as expected, won by with 79%. Bottas with 0%. I, I, I mean, I feel like 1% would have been nice, but... I'll vote oh well. for him. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> You've got 39 minutes left, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> Raikkonen, 14%. And Ova, which is 7%. But yet again... You can comment the driver. There's nothing stopping you. We would like to know who the other driver is. Just saying. Jack, who was your driver of the day? It's, it's you know what? Some, so much happened in that race, but I feel like only one driver deserved driver of the day. It's so weird because uh, uh, everything, there was so much action that happened, but normally you can pick a few, but it has to be Daniel Ricciardo yeah, because be. I can't really, no one else really stands out. You know, for me, probably the other one was Bottas being, you know, cons- consistent, but nobody else voted for him. He got no zero uh, <laughs> percent. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's got to be Daniel Ricciardo, the way he showed from sixth place, you know, to, to winning the race. Obviously, strategy helped, but them overtakes were just phenomenal. Yeah, I've got to go with Daniel Ricciardo as well. An incredible drive, one of the drives, one of the drives of his career, mm. probably the best um, so far in his career. Anyway, we'll quickly look at the driver standing. So Sebastian Vettel still top after two wins, nine points clear of Lewis Hamilton, but obviously there's 18 races to go yet. Valtteri Bottas in third, thanks to his consistency at finishing second. Daniel Ricciardo fourth with his first win of the season with only 37, so he's definitely in contention. Kimi Raikkonen, boah, <laughs> he's there, but he's just not there, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> Fernando Alonso, six, and obviously we carry on, and Max Verstappen, eighth, Van Dorn, 11th, but uh, if we look at the Constructors' Championship, uh, Mercedes are top by one point. It could be close this season <laughs> for that as well. We could have two close championships uh, all in one year. Mercedes, with 85, Ferrari 84. Red Bull are quite behind with 55. But McLaren are still in fourth. Really? But they've got their <laughs> friends, Renault, three points behind. <laughs> no. Renault are probably thinking, I'm going to admit, we should be ahead of you because we're providing <laughs> yeah. you with the stuff. <laughs> or you can go back to Honda. No, yeah. no. <laughs> please, <laughs> please, no. Uh, Toro Rosso, six. And as we look now, Force India, I've actually got the one point. I thought they had zero got one point but wins have got nil point and it might stay like that for at least mm-hmm. most of the season um, anyway my thanks to Jack Price as always uh, what, what would you give that race rating then out of 10 well we give last week uh, last week's a 9 out of 10 I, I want to say 8.5 8.5 oh you're so statistical aren't you uh, well, I, I, what would you say then it was a good race <laughs> I'll probably oh, no. say every race is 10 out of 10 but then like the best race ever will be 11 out of 10 I'll give it an 8 oh wow uh, okay so no, no 0.5s no 0.5s for me because I don't like to half give um, anyway thanks to Jack again <laughs> thanks to you at home for watching and of course we'll be back next week as we preview the Azerbaijan Grand Prix